Well, that was a great opening to SmackDown, Jim. And before you get too verklempt or anything, let's talk about the rest of what. Are you, you, you going to tell the people we had to take about a 15 minute break because the pressure washers were it, it just beating us to death, and then we got them down to the other end of the house. But now the duct cleaners from Coit for my renovated room have come, and it sounds like you know for another thing we did for Halloween, Stace and I and Harley, we watched the Willard and Ben double feature over on the cock because they got movies too as well as the wrestling and uh it sounds when they're cleaning the ducks down in the room downstairs it sounds like there's ten thousand rats scurrying through the the ceiling and the walls of that room so if you hear that that's why i don't have rats not anymore i'm retired from that but now i've just got duck cleaners what's willard and ben is that like a claymation thing are you fucking are no oh god hold on wait a minute <laughs> Seriously? What the fuck? We got to put the pause button on because now there is millions and millions of Cult of Cornet members and listeners around the world scoffing at you, Brian Last. The movies, Willard and Ben. You oh, try it again? I thought you said there were going to be a new series of shows that you were watching on Peacock, which surprised me. No, I said they had the double feature of Willard and Ben oh, for Halloween on the cock. You do know, okay. I do now, know Ben because it influenced Michael Jackson to write his one love song, which was about a rat. No, okay. See, you don't know anything. You have no knowledge of anything. It's not that he wrote that song because he loved a rat. Ben was the sequel to Willard. Willard was the troubled youth, Ute, the troubled Ute in the movie that befriended a white rat. And then the white rat found a friend that was a darker, like a brown or black rat name, and he named it Ben. And then when the white Socrates, the kindly, loving white rat, when it was killed by the evil owner of the company that had stolen the company from Willard's father, played by Ernie Borgnine, I'll have you know, killed Socrates and Ben went on the warpath and so did Willard and they got even, they killed a bunch of people and then they ended up turning on Willard. But Ben escaped the wrath of the authorities and came back for Ben, where he found another young troubled Ute, even younger. He was a younger Ute, and he had a bad heart, and he was, he was forced to stay in the house, and he had no friends. But he had musical talent. He was a talented young kid. Too bad he didn't have Twitter. Too bad he didn't have Twitter. He could have he could have connected with the world instead of befriending Ben. Ben, the two of us need to look no more. We've both found what we've been looking for. See? And that's when he wrote the song in the movie because he was tinkling on his piano, the young man. Ben, the two of us need look no more. For the record. We both found what we were yeah, I'm looking sure. for. I'm sure this explains a lot, but to have I thought you were like saying it was a ben. show called Willard and Ben that everyone no. knew. And I was like, I've never heard no. of this show. And no. by the way, the show I was thinking of was Wallace and Gromit. The <laughs> claim. Well, see, <laughs> that's close to Willard and Ben. You've got Wallace <laughs> and you got Gromit. But nevertheless, the kid wrote the song in the movie and then and then Michael Jackson released it. His ode, his pan love song to a uh, to a rat. And it was a. a touching thing until years later when you realize what a freak he was and then it may have started with this rat love well you know hey there's the north american rat love association <laughs> would was based out of memphis at you, i believe it was based in, <laughs> but nevertheless your rats are they're 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 kind and clean little animals remember i've had some pet rats not the wild ones you find out there you don't know where they've been but the the pet store rats if you've got an a enclosed area or a small city apartment or whatever you can't have a dog running around you a little rat they're they're very loving are dogs the perfect pet a dog is a perfect pet yes and, and uh, multiple to many dogs actually just have a bunch of dogs just don't have people what do you think of cats you know, cats are cute and cats are furry, but cats are also a little prickish and I'm somewhat allergic. 
What about hamsters? Well, hamsters are just, they're inoffensive little creatures. They just like to sit there and piss and shit and chew on their seed all day. Turtles and frogs. Now you're, what the fuck is this? Now, are you, am I Marlon Perkins? <laughs> While Brian stays in the truck, I'll go and search for the saber-toothed porpoise. That wasn't on my list. I'm not good. I've I've played when I was a child with frogs and and tortoises and turtles and things, but I'm not going to have them as pets and name them and, you know, and I don't like spiders and snakes, and that ain't what it takes to love me like I want to be loved by you. What about fish? A fresh fish tank? A fresh fish for me to pull them out of and them to be fried for me. I've never, I've, yeah, I've, you know, a fish tank is nice to look at, but that's a lot of maintenance. And I'll be a son of a bitch. You can't teach those fish to do a thing. Not a thing. A trick. Roll over. I taught a bunch of fish when I was a kid to play dead. That's the only thing I ever learned from me. Were we talking about the wrestling? Speaking of playing dead, we were talking about SmackDown. Oh, yeah. 